Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Video Game Cemetery, the home to all things retro video games. And today's episode is episode 7, at long last. This has been well overdue. Why is this episode taking so long? Well, to be fair, this game that I'm reviewing today takes some time to prepare for because it's extremely, extremely difficult. I am, of course, talking about this game, Jersey Devil on the PS1. Oh yeah, we're doing this shit. Now, before I start, I'd just like to say Happy Halloween. This is my Halloween special. It wasn't going to be, but considering how long it took, it's nearly Halloween now. And to be fair, this game is perfectly suited for Halloween, I feel. So, this is my Halloween special of the Video Game Cemetery, Episode 7. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to my wonderful, beautiful Princess Scarlet, who I think is watching this right now. Happy Halloween, gorgeous! Oh boy, Jersey Devil. Where the hell do I even begin? I picked up this game in the late 90s and I absolutely loved it and hated it all at the same time. Not because the game was bad, but the difficulty was absolutely astronomical. Keep in mind, this was in the days when I used to get frustrated with Crash Bandicoot's difficulty and Jersey Devil was that turned up to 11. The game was released here in the UK in 1997 by Ocean. You may remember them from my Rainbow Islands video. Ocean get a lot of shit, but honestly, I really love their games. Jersey Devil is no exception. In the States, it was released in 98 by Sony Computer Entertainment of America, and in Japan, it was released by our dear friends at Konami in 1999. As you can probably see, here in the UK, we got it first. And that means we got the earliest and hardest build of the game. In fact, it's drastically different to the others, but we'll get to that later. It was a PlayStation exclusive, and in my view has become an absolute classic, synonymous with stress. The story of Jersey Devil is nothing you haven't really already seen before, to be honest, though it does present it with such charm that it can easily be forgiven. You play as Jersey Devil, a mythical superhero-like being that was captured as a baby by the evil Dr. Narf. And yes, Narf is a reference to the Pinky and the Brain cartoons, well done for noticing that. And Narf was planning on experimenting and dissecting the baby devil to study him. However, Jersey Devil is able to wreck the entire science lab and escape via a massive nitrogen explosion and the baby devil lands in the town of Jersey, where he remained. As the years went by, he was forgotten about and one day, Jersey is infested with mutants and vegetable monsters. They chase people about, causing chaos and that's when we discover that Jersey Devil, now fully grown, is watching from the rooftops. Narf is up to no good again, and Jersey Devil remembers his traumatic childhood. He remembers Narf. And now, he's going to put a stop to all of this chaos he has brought to his hometown. Narf will remember the name of Batman. Oh, I mean, Jersey Devil. So yeah, like I said, the story isn't much to write home about, but I am serious about its charm, and that Batman joke was not without meaning either. This game has a very strong Batman vibe to it. Now I'm going to give a demonstration of how I believe Jersey Devil came to be. So the game company had Crash Bandicoot, they had Spyro the Dragon, and they were watching a lot of Saturday morning cartoons at the time. So one day they were sitting here and they thought, hmm, Crash, Spyro, <coughs> smack them together, Jersey Devil. Yeah. The gameplay in Jersey Devil is, yeah, Crash Bandicoot mixed with Spyro the Dragon. It really is. You've got this horned purple character that has wings and can use them to glide. He smashes boxes open and he attacks with a spin. 
He can also punch, but you won't be using that half as much as the spin attack. The objective is to traverse the levels and collect emblems with letters on them to spell out NARF, K-N-A-R-N-F, which will allow you to open doors and progress through the game. Sometimes these letters are hidden in boxes, sometimes they fall from enemies, and other times they just seem to fall from the sky. You can occasionally see them just floating there too, so there is variation to collecting these. Each level, not including the hub worlds, are filled with death pits and doom, and more often than not you will be falling down these. Now, in the USA and Japanese versions, there is a little extra feature. Hostages. Narf has taken the hostages and Jersey Devil has to find them and set them free. Here in the UK, however, they don't exist, so they're nothing to be worrying about. I mean, we have enough problems to deal with in the UK version than to worry about rescuing random people who manage to get themselves trapped in stupid places. The platforming in this game is pretty clunky, and the gliding doesn't always work the way it should. As I said, there are tons of pitfalls in this game, and you will find yourself falling through them way too many times. If I'm trying to jump to a distant platform, and it's only out of reach by micropixel, my glide will have me clip right through the platform and fall down to my death. This doesn't happen all the time, but it still happens a little too often. You have to be extremely precise with each jump most of the time. The enemies can be annoying as hell also. As early as level one, you will find these mosquito enemies hovering right between platforms over deadly death pits. You have to jump and spin attack them as you jump across, then go into a glide all while being precise with your timing and judgement of distance. You can sometimes hit them before you make the jump, but you need to be right near the edge of the platform and again, be precise. If you get hit by an enemy, it also knocks you backwards. And on a game where most levels are tiny little platforms, this will often result in you flying back off the ledge and once again splat at the bottom of the pit. I think maybe the two biggest problems in this game that contribute to its difficulty are the camera and the amazing lack of checkpoints and save points. If you're in the USA or Japan, checkpoints and save points aren't really an issue as you guys got about 50% more of these than we did in the UK. But the camera is a constant issue, whatever region you're in. It seems you're always fighting against the camera, and you're often in ridiculously tight camera angles. Or, the camera gets stuck on the walls. And adding to this, if you're on a tiny platform, Jersey Devil feels the need to leap off the edge if he's too close. Yes, he literally jumps down the pits of death by choice. I think this could have been fixed by having him grab the edge if he slips off instead of him just willing to commit suicide. I guess even Jersey Devil realises how hopeless this task is. At the end of certain parts of the levels you will have a boss to contend with. These are probably the least difficult parts of the game if you can believe that. Once you master the pattern of the boss, they become fairly simple to deal with. Once that boss is beaten, a new area in the hub world will open up, allowing you to proceed further. The main collectible in Jersey Devil is pumpkins, and collecting a hundred will give you an extra life. You can also find extra lives in the form of purple devil tails, if you're willing to risk your lives to obtain that one extra, which most of the time, I'll be honest, really isn't worth it. Now make no mistake, I am a huge Jersey Devil fan, but god damn it, I tore so much of my hair out over this fucking game. This game is frustration to a T, and it is so difficult. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is literally considered one of the hardest 3D platformers of all time. And part of the reason, not all, but part of the reason why I've taken so long to prepare this damn video is because of how fucking hard this game is. I'm not kidding you. Now, for you Americans out there watching this video, if you're watching this thinking, hmm, yeah, you know what, he's right. Jersey Devil really is a hard game. Well, I've got to tell you this, but our version's harder than yours. Here in the UK, we have about 50% less checkpoints, about 35% more gaps to fall down and die on, maybe 20% harder platforming, 
and it is just a nightmare. It's a complete nightmare. Graphically, I think the game looks really impressive for its time. Again, it feels like a Saturday morning cartoon and has a Batman aesthetic to it. There are a few graphical differences between the UK version to the USA and Japan versions, however. Here in the UK, the pumpkins you collect all have faces on them. Perfect for Halloween, especially since this is my Halloween special for the video game cemetery. However, these faces are removed entirely from the USA and Japan versions. I really, really have no idea why. Other differences include cutscenes being between levels being absent from the UK version, NARF tokens being different in appearance, and Jersey Devil having no face animation in the UK version. There are titles for levels on the loading screens in the USA and Japan versions, and a bunch of other graphical changes. But, whichever version you go for, the graphics are really nice. Nothing really feels ugly or unpleasant, though the hub worlds can look a little bit plain at times. The game doesn't have the best draw distance in the world, but for the type of game it is, I feel it works in its favour. A lot of the levels are meant to be dark and cartoon gothic, and since they're all full of death drops, I think it really adds to its feel. Occasionally there will be breaks in the graphics because hey, this is the PS1 so some clipping is bound to happen, but it never really bothered me when playing. Only when I fell through the graphics to my death did it really piss me off. Now we're getting to the very best part of this game. It's soundtrack. Oh my fucking god, this soundtrack is amazing. And unlike any other platformer out there, most games of the PS1 era that were focused on the platforming mascots of the time had happy, jolly, bouncy music to play to. Just listen to Crash Bandicoot. And listen to Spyro. See? But not Jersey Devil. Remember I said numerous times that this game had a Batman aesthetic? Yeah, well, this is what Jersey Devil's music sounds like. Ooh, gives you chills, don't it? The amazing soundtrack was by Gilles Leville, and I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but you are a musical genius. The rest of the sounds in the game are fairly generic, with cartoony bangs and pops and swishes, but in no way are they bad. 
Honestly though, just hearing the soundtrack alone would sell me on this game if I'd never played it before. It sounds like a brooding, gothic vampire story, despite being based around a cartoon cryptid in a spiral-coloured Batman suit. If you haven't heard the soundtrack in full, I strongly advise you to go find a copy and just listen to it. It is incredible. Looking back at it now, Jersey Devil was not without its flaws, and I would have done a section for flaws alone, but I've already done a pretty good job covering that already throughout the video, so I won't do it again. But even with its flaws, Jersey Devil is a very underrated gem. He fell into obscurity pretty much immediately, and I think, in this era of classic PlayStation games getting the HD remake treatment, Jersey Devil is one that should definitely be considered, along with Gex and Croc, though I somehow doubt this will ever happen. Jersey Devil is for the hardcore platform gamer, not for casual gamers by any stretch of the imagination. I still haven't beaten it, over 20 years, and I cannot get past the bloody cemetery level so I most definitely don't claim to be an expert at it. But I do love and appreciate it, and I think it has more than earned its spot on the shelves of the video game cemetery forever. If you want to play it yourself, I'd recommend starting with the USA or Japan versions. They are drastically easier than the UK one. So maybe start with those, then move on to our UK version. Not to say the USA or Japan versions are easy, they're not. They're still hard as nails, but they're hard as clean nails, not rusty diseased ones like here in the UK. And with that said, I would say that yes, Jersey Devil is worth playing. So if you're a Crash or Spyro fan, or a platformer fan in general that somehow missed this one, you can go ahead and check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And that's it, that was Jersey Devil, a game that I'm pretty certain has given people loads of aneurysms. I don't recommend you try and beat it, but I do recommend you play it. It is a good game, regardless of how difficult it is. I hope you enjoyed the episode of Jersey Devil. Uh, if you'd like to leave a like and subscribe, it is very, very appreciated and very, very welcome. But you are not in any way forced to do that. Just you watching the video is support enough for me. Thank you. But if you do want to, it does help the channel. So go ahead and do that if you like. I'd just like to take this chance to say visit this website down here. Geeks the Gamers. See it down there? Visit there, you can get some great retro collectibles. I get a lot of my stuff from here. And I also go to the store because you get even better stuff if you actually visit the store. It's like a treasure trove of retro games and comic books and leads and consoles and chips and whatever. It's heaven. Visit it, please. Thank you for watching the Video Game Cemetery and I will see you all next time. Peace. Hmm, now that the Jersey Devil video has been done, I wonder what game I'll be working on next. Hmm.